Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video and today I want to share with you some of the tips and tricks that are worth remembering when answering mechanics questions on pulleys. So tip one is to make sure that you're depicting in the diagram all the forces that are involved in the system and for pulleys there aren't that many. We've got a couple of weights M1 and M2 and we've got some tension. If your pulley looks more like this then you also may need to consider friction if the surface is rough. But apart from that, the two pulleys are actually quite similar. My second tip is that if you're told that the pulley is smooth and the string is inextensible, which is 99% of the time, then that means the tension in both ends of the string are going to be the same. And my last tip is that F equals MA is going to be your go-to equation for pulley questions. and You'll need to use it twice, one on each particle separately, and uh, that will give you a set of simultaneous equations that you can then use to solve either for acceleration or tension or mass. So with that being said, let's have a look at a generic pulleys question. Two particles A and B of masses 4 kilograms and 3 kilograms respectively are connected by a light inextensible st string which passes over a smooth pulley. The particles are released from rest with the string taught find the tension in the string. Okay, so let's start by drawing a diagram. So here's my attempt at drawing a pulley. So the word respectively tells us that uh, particle A has a mass of 4 kg and particle B has a mass of 3 kg. So let's uh, put that on the diagram. So if the mass of A is 4 kg then the weight of A is 4g which doesn't mean 4 grams, it means 4 times uh, the gravitational constant and for particle B we have a weight of 3g. And we also have the tension in the string in both ends pointing towards the pulley. And notice how in the question we're told that the string is inextensible and the pulley is smooth so that tells us the tension in both ends of the string are exactly the same. And we're also told that the string is light, so we don't need to worry about any of the string uh, contributing towards the weight of any of the masses. And since we know that A weighs more than B, uh, that means we can tell that the acceleration of A is going to be travelling, is going to be in this direction, and the acceleration of B, therefore, is going to be in this direction. And obviously because it's the same string, the acceleration of A is going to equal the acceleration of B. So now we can go ahead and use F equals MA on our two particles separately. So if we first resolve the forces of A, we have a weight of 4G and a tension opposing it up here, which we don't know yet. But because we know that um, A is going to be accelerating downwards, we know that 4G is greater than t. But our, so our net force is 4g minus t and that's equal to ma so our mass is 4 kilograms so m is 4 and we don't know the acceleration yet so we can put a. So now if we resolve the forces around b we have a tension um, pulling b up towards the pulley and a weight of 3 um, times gravitational constant opposing the tension. So our net force is T minus 3G and that's equal to MA and in this case the mass is 3 kilograms 
and again the acceleration we don't know yet. So this leaves us with two unknowns, t and a, and two equations, which means that we can solve this set of simultaneous equations for t and a. So let's start by adding the two equations together to eliminate t. So that will give us, on the left, that will give us 4g minus 3g, so g. And on the right, we're going to add them together so we get 7, 7a. Seven so that tells us that a is equal to g over 7 meters per second squared. But in the question, we're told to find the tension. And so if we plug a back into one of the equations, then that will give us our value for t. So using the second equation, t equals 3g plus 3a. So t equals 3g plus 3g over 7, which I believe is 24 over 7g. And the unit of tension is the newton. Also, if you're getting value out of this video, then consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you never miss a thing. Here we have the second part of the question. When A has travelled a distance of 2 metres, it strikes the ground and immediately comes to rest. Find the speed of A when it strikes the ground. So the fact that we have a distance a constant acceleration that we just worked out and an initial speed which is from rest um, that signifies to us that we're going to need SUVAT to answer this question and often in pulley questions they will involve a bit of SUVAT like we're seeing here So we've been told three pieces of information, a distance, an initial speed, and an acceleration. And we've been asked to find out the final speed of A, and we're not interested in how long it takes. And so which of the SUVAT equations omits the letter T? It is, of course, V squared equals u squared plus 2as and so if we plug in um, our values for u, a and s that will give us v squared equals 0 plus 2g over 7 times 2 so v squared equals 4g over 7 and therefore v is equal to the square root of 4g over 7, which is 2.37 meters per second to three significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what video you want me to make next. But for now, take care and I'll see you soon.